So it's here. We are almost at the end of this incredible series. I'm devastated by that fact, but I'm so grateful that we actually got a chance to bring this full story to fans who have been wanting to see it in animated form for so many years. I think the thing that surprised me the most about this show is how seamlessly it's able to transition from moments of absurd comedy, just silly slapstick hilarious stuff, into like the most simple, subtle moments of emotion and connection. It's just so darn full of, of things to explore. And it's a good story with likable characters. It's got, you know, funny moments, lighthearted moments, sad moments. It's very dramatic. Uh, I, I would probably call it a drama. Maybe that was the way, a drama with people who turn into animals, um, oftentimes when they don't want to. I think a lot of people see the animation and the love stories that are kind of entwined with Fruits Basket and it's easy to see it as, as surface. It's easy to, to think that it's gonna be just this fluffy, girly romance. And I'm so happy that each of you has taken the time to actually watch and realize how deep the story goes because this is one for the ages. This is one that covers such a wide and deep array of emotions. Isuzu has a lot of emotional scenes, but by far the most intense was when she was breaking down and just remembering her parents and their abuse and um, when they disowned her. I've played characters like that before, but this was the first time that I played a character like that now having been a parent. And it just hit me on so many more levels than it ever has before. And I was, I, I think I was able to give the performance more layers than I've ever been capable of giving before because of just having that new perspective. The scene where uh, Kyo shows his true form has always, has always gotten me right, right here in this area. I think the scene that I reacted to most emotionally last season would have been my scene with Toru at the end where I explain everything. Uh, those were real tears. I, uh, I genuinely wept throughout the process of recording that. Uh, I think it was just so beautifully written and animated and it's just so heartbreaking. For me, the theme that resonates the most in the series would be the theme of family. I'm a big family man, uh, not a large family man, although I am larger than I'd like to be. But uh, I have two kids, wife, uh, mother-in-law, my parents, my brother and his family, we all live real close together. And I am invested in that part of my life more than anything else. It's, it's the most important thing that I do every day. So to watch these people um, start out, especially Yuki, start out not knowing these things about family, not knowing how important it is to them, and then learning on the journey that it ultimately is the thing that matters most is uh, really, it's really important for me, really special for me. A theme of the show that I really love is that concept of loving yourself. Um, I know for Azuzu, it's the concept of feeling worthy of love, which is something that really resonated with me. It's something that I, you know, have been through in my own life um, and I'm now on the other side of it. So just understanding that struggle and having been through that before, it's, it's so much more universal than I think we want to believe. Because when you're in that mindset and you're in that state, it feels so lonely. Um, but the reality is, is that at some point, everyone has that feeling, which is why I think that character and the show as a whole, you know, really resonates with people. I've been looking forward to this particular season of Fruits Basket since the beginning, because as a, as a fan, knowing that it's coming, I'm waiting for us to get to see Akito's storyline really develop. Um, and I knew that that was gonna be something that would be amazing to play. It's really rare 
to get to play a character with this much depth that you see so seldom. Because you don't see very much of Akito. So when you do, you're kind of like clawing for, for little glimpses of what, what is behind that mask. What are we, what are we actually looking at? And so I, I was waiting for it to develop and for us to get a chance to see all of it. In the new season, I really hope I really hope that we get to see more of uh, her friendship with Toru Blossom. It's such an unlikely pairing. They're so opposite from one another, but I think they can really learn a lot from each other as a result. Um, I, I'm hoping to see uh, Yuki become some sort of action hero. Uh, it's kind of the thing that's been missing from the show so far, but I don't know if that's going to happen. In the third season, I guess I would say that I am hoping to see um, Kurano follow his heart, is one, uh, and mechs. Giant, shiny, super well animated mechs. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. First Basket season three, giant mechs. Kyo, buddy, you're gonna make it. It's gonna be okay. Um, don't worry so much about the things you can't change and focus on the thing you care about. You got a good thing going here. Um, just keep on going. Don't mess it up. The thing that I've learned about advice is that oftentimes the advice that you give people uh, is usually advice that you'd give yourself to overcome what they're going through, not necessarily the thing that you would give them to help them get through it. The advice that I'd give Yuki would be uh, something along the lines of um, care a little less about what people think about you and care a little bit more about what you think about you. I guess if I had to give Kurino some advice, it would be to follow his heart. Um, I think if more people followed their instincts and followed their heart, the world would be a much happier place. If I could say anything to the creators in Japan, it's just thank you. Thank you for making such a gorgeous show. Uh, thank you for being willing to portray these deep, vulnerable, intense feelings that are so universal that people are just often too afraid to dive that deep. So thank you for going there and thank you for normalizing those feelings. Job well done. You made a great show with relatable and lovable characters and an excellent story. And let's not forget the animation. It's, it's beautiful. It has been an honor to have the chance to dub uh, a character in this show. And uh, I thank you for the opportunity. I would just like to say thank you for creating such an amazing piece of art. Uh, if you were unaware, a lot of people really love this show. It means a lot to a lot of people. So thank you for putting that out into the world. My words of encouragement to the audience as we enter the final part of this story is be strong, it gets pretty emotional. So uh, make sure you've got your tissues and preferably somebody who understands how gross it is when you cry gross because you're gonna cry pretty gross. So good luck. For the fans out there, who really resonate with Azuzu and might also have those feelings of unworthiness and those feelings of, I have to be a loner and I have to be alone forever because I am not worthy of love. You are, you are worthy of love. And I hope in some way seeing Azuzu's progression and growth with that can help you see that in your own life as well. I love you guys. You're amazing. <laughs> uh, thank you for all your support. Thank you for everything. Seriously, you guys are incredible. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being a part of this magical journey. Thank you so much for trusting us with this story. It means an incredible amount to every single person who's involved. This is one of those shows that when we talk about it as actors, we talk about it with love and with this almost devotion to bringing it to you in the way that it was in originally intended. Uh, so I'm hoping that that comes through. I hope that 
our devotion to it matches yours and that you feel like we've been good stewards of this incredible property. We've, we've loved every second of it. And um, I'm really excited to see what happens in this next season.